Hello, hello. Today we're going to talk about Therapeutic Garden Part 2. So we're now on item number 5. And I actually had some difficulty talking about what kind of practices I should be including here. Originally, I was going to go with detail-oriented until I realized that by detail, I was looking at the ability for students to attend to vocabulary and direction you know, cues and words. I was looking at literacy issues. And I also realized that by detail, I am talking about what should be happening in the project, which is actually going to be related to visualization. So as you might have noticed by now, while I'm only generally talking about one topic per thing, per item, it's really concepts that are interwoven through all of these parts. And in this particular section, I'm going to come back and revisit visualization techniques and literacy in math. If you even take a look at the name of this project, you know, this part of it, Therapeutic Garden Part 2, it's because, again, it's the fifth part, I'm referring back to what we did in the second. I'm looking back at those gardening practices that are designed to make it accessible to everybody. In particular, the water features are usually put in front of doorways in dementia care areas. That way, patients, they can see it, they can hear it, they can attend to it. And in this water feature, I told them they have a triangular koi pond, and they're asked to put a fountain in the center of it. And of course, we're going to assume that our fountain is round, and it's a circle, and we want to put it in the middle so that it touches each side of this koi pond. Because I said that I want it to be the same distance from each edge of the pool. Well, that freezing of same distance, that comes back to a little bit of this literacy, so this knowledge that it means equidistant. Because again, that's how I've been framing it for the past, well, many weeks. And from there, I had to figure out, well, what is this thing describing? And in that sense, literacy and visualization are greatly intertwined. If students don't have the vocabulary, then they can't possibly conceive or think about whatever is actually happening. A lot of the students didn't realize that the circle was going inside the triangle and that it had to be the same distance from all the sides. That wasn't something that was clicking with them. Some of them also missed the keyword of construct. They were trying to sketch out these items as a final answer instead of using the sketch as a guide and then figuring out based on their notes what construction they actually had to make with the compass. So again, this is combining the literacy of understanding what are they supposed to be doing and this visualization of saying, okay, well, what should it look like when I'm done? What is my end product supposed to be? And while it's not pictured here, I actually gave them a similar question where I told them that they had to put the largest possible swimming pool inside a triangular area. So it could touch the flower bed, the walkway, and the brick, but it couldn't really push over into them. Well, if students were paying attention to the wording, they'd notice that the scenario was pretty much the same. But again, they'd have to get past that literacy barrier and determine, you know, what's happening, break down the words, annotate it, figure out what is actually being asked of them. This one is actually one of my favorites due to its athletic nature. Basically, I told them that they have a baseball diamond. It's a square, so right angles. I told them that it is 90 feet between each base and that the positions of shortstop and second baseman are exactly halfway between those bases. Now, a math student who's paying attention to all these details and has a labeled diagram, which, again, connects the literacy of the reading to the visual markings on a diagram, a student who's attending to all that will be able to recognize several of our mathematical terminology, our practices, and some of this missing information, how we can you know, actually fill it on in. Once I've done this fill-in, I said, well, let's take it from a really athletic standpoint. Let's say that we're going to conditioning practice. And I said, you have two options. Your first option is you can run around this entire diamond six times and around the smaller triangle formed by shortstop, pitcher, and second baseman five times. Alternatively, you can run around the triangle formed by first, second, and third base eight times and then run around the triangle formed by shortstop, pitcher, and second baseman three times. And told them they had to show their work, they had to figure out how long each option was, and then tell me why they would pick which option. So again, I'm looking for mathematical steps, and I'm also looking for reasoning and written communication, which is an important part of literacy. It is equally reading, writing, communicating both verbally and in hard copy. 
So what I'm looking at here is that this item number five, I'm taking it to be the literacy of being able to read and comprehend, but also to communicate to me their thought process. It also looks at combining that text to visual representation, where they've got to figure out what the information in the paragraph tells them about the baseball diamond itself, and then how that connects to math practices they've been using the entire year, like Pythagorean theorem, like mid-segments, like parallel lines. They're trying to tie everything together, just as I am tying both reading and writing strategies to visualization techniques in this one particular project item.